Good morning, Peter Gertz. Involuntary psychiatric hospitalization. This is an issue I've struggled with a lot over the years, and it's something one needs to strike a balance in. You wanna balance the danger of a patient to society, to themselves, the question of whether they can take care of themselves or not. So you wanna balance all that with their own right to freedom. So it's really a very difficult situation sometimes and the decision whether or not to hospitalize someone involuntarily can be quite tricky. And basically, I don't like having to hospitalize people involuntarily. And in fact, I don't like treating patients involuntarily. But unfortunately, I don't know of any other way to treat some patients in certain situations. So this came up again to me, this issue. And this past week, there was a patient who presented very well in the emergency room. So there was no very clear sign of mania, psychosis, suicidality. She seemed basically stable. However, when I got information from the family, it was a different story. And then you have to kind of balance the he says, she says of the whole situation. And I ended up feeling that it was wise to hospitalize that patient psychiatrically against her will. And that made me revisit the whole issue because again, to me, it just doesn't feel very good to treat psychiatric patients against their will. However, I don't have a great alternative. And in fact, if you go to a hospital ward and ask patients why they're on the ward, the ones that say there's no reason for them to be there, unfortunately, are generally the ones in my experience who really need to be there. So that's one of the major problems in psychiatry. And people make errors, I myself have made errors in both directions. You can hospitalize people sometimes and then afterwards you realize, oh, maybe that was not the best thing. Or you cannot hospitalize them and then think, oh my God, I don't feel really great about discharging that patient from the emergency room. But hindsight is always better than the view you have at the time you see the patient in the emergency room. So, if you see a psychiatric patient in the emergency room, they may be grossly disorganized, maybe suicidal, homicidal, or they may look totally intact and unremarkable as if they have no psychiatric issue. So it's very important, like I mentioned, to get more information. And that is, for example, from the chart, from the family, records from other hospitals, and try and come to an overall view of the situation. And the collateral is very important because let's say a patient presents, so collateral information, let's say from the family is very important because let's say the patient presents looking fine. He was brought in because of saying he was suicidal but he's saying, oh, he didn't really mean it. And he says, everything's fine. But then he called the family and it turns out he tried to hang himself the day before. So you can really, if you don't get enough information, you can really not get a, an adequate view of the whole situation. And then your judgment, your decisions are gonna be flawed. So bottom line, trust your gut. You wanna put everything together get as much information as you can, then trust your gut and make the best decision you can at a given time. And if you're on the verge, if you're not really feeling strongly either way, you probably want to err on the safe side of having the patient go to the hospital. And then if necessary, they can be discharged the next day. Thank you.